Hello everyone, welcome to a special CUBE conversation. We are here in Palo Alto, California, the CUBE Studios. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We're here with Dominic Wild, the CEO of SnapRoute. Dom, great to see you. Indeed. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks. Yeah. So you guys are launching Snap, SnapRoute. What is the company? What are you guys launching? Tell us. Well, quite simply stated, we're delivering a new class of network operating system for the cloud native era. Um, and, and really what that does is it, it delivers on the promise of time to service for applications, um, always on security assurance and compliance, and greater operational efficiency, which is really one of the things that's been plaguing organizations to, to date. How long has the company been around? This is the first public launch of yeah, the solution. Yeah. Talk about the history real quick. So the company was founded in 2015 um, by some uh, former operators from Apple. Um, they, uh, they built and ran Apple's sort of biggest public facing data centers um, from a networking perspective. Um, and uh, you know we've been working diligently on um, this, this sort of new class of operating system that was really inspired by you know, th their time building out those data centers. Um, and if you, you, you kind of look back, networking's not really had any major disruptive innovation in the last 25, 30 years. Um, but back in sort of 2006 with the advent of AWS and the, and the new sort of big hyperscalers, um, those guys started to realize that the, the network was something that was kind of getting in the way of their operational efficiency of, of being able to automate and drive the network at scale. Um, and so our founders, you know, went through that whole sort of discovery process and, and things when, uh, when they were at Apple. And, um, you know, and the hyperscalers drove the advent of this kind of white box disaggregated networking, separating the, the software operating system from the hardware. And the reason behind that was really around gaining, great, gaining greater control because so legacy networking vendors were not delivering what was needed and they needed to get more control. Um, and so um, our founders really saw the opportunity to, to say, look, we think that there's a way of solving what an operator really needs and what an organization needs. And one of the big challenges there is how do networking operations teams collaborate with DevOps teams? Because the DevOps teams are responsible for you know, time to service for the application, and that's, you know, that's really the value of the organization. Um, and so you know, they set out to solve that problem, to say, well, how can we build a network operating system? And what they realized was that you know, what DevOps had done is, is embrace sort of cloud native principles, containerization, virtualization, microservices. Um, and so what we've done is we've built a, from the ground up, a newly architected network operating system that is a fully containerized microservices architecture um, that embeds Kubernetes um, and allows the networking for the first time to be brought natively into the DevOps tool chain. So NetOps teams can still sort of control and deploy the network and define policy and things, but now they don't have to worry about those, you know, sort of annoying day-to-day -day tasks where, you know, a DevOps engineer is trying to get an application on the network and, and you know, they have to just do sort of some, you know, pretty trivial moves, adds, changes and things. Um, and so, you know, in, in, in doing that, what we also figured out was we could solve, you know, problems not just around the operational efficiencies and the time to service, but also a lot of security issues as well. So a lot of development, going public with the product, you mentioned Kubernetes, talk about the cloud. What are the big shifts in the industry that you guys are riding on? Because you have tailwinds, you got the cloud. Yeah. What's yeah. the wave that you're on? Can you take a minute to explain some of the big shifts in the industry that are going to help yeah. you guys? Yeah, well, I, I think there's several things. Um, I, I think one of the biggest is that, you know, every single organization out there is looking nervously over its shoulder because we live in an age of, you know, very, very rapid disruption. Um, it's kind of you know what we call the Amazon effect, right? Um, you know, there's big established companies who've been around for many, many years who are being disrupted by you know adjacent you know companies who are in adjacent spaces or new startups coming in. So everybody now realizes they need to use technology to their advantage, and they have to disrupt themselves before you know they're they're disrupted. So so that's one of the the, the big drivers, and and so um, time to service speed, efficiency are all sort of paramount when you're in you know, any C-suite you know, discussion. Um, those, are, those are things that come up all the time. 
Um, from a technology perspective, um, we're seeing um, things, you know, things changing significantly in how we use technology. Um, and you know, so everything is mobile. Um, you know, we have the advent of IoT coming in, and so you know, lots of services are moving to the edge. And so the d the data centers um, that were traditionally you know completely centralized are now sort of starting to distribute a little bit as well. Um, so you have this you know idea of sort of edge data centers and edge compute. So there's there's a lot of uh, of things you know changing and happening, and there's a lot of opportunity for us to deliver you know some strong value in there. So the, obviously the cloud native trend that you mentioned is big. Yeah. That's driving the application market. DevOps, yeah. you mentioned earlier, huge. We've seen years now and years of evidence of growth yeah. on DevOps. Yeah. Okay, so now it's coming down into the network. How, how are companies solving the challenges for application developers that are in a DevOps world? Because that seems to be the growth. Mm -hmm. That seems where the pressure is coming from. There's yeah. more requirements coming from the applications right. yeah. to the network. How are companies solving this problem? So, you know, so I think from the compute and storage side, things have moved along, you know, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty swiftly. Um, so, you know, as an application engineer, what what you want is you want the infrastructure to service you. You just you just want it to do what the application needs. Um, unfortunately, you know, traditionally infrastructure as 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 in the other way around, you know, you deploy the infrastructure and you say, okay, well, this is what the application can do within the constraints of the infrastructure. And, and networking has, you know, just continued that idea. Um, and so what, what you want to do is you want to take this idea of, you know, we've talked before about infrastructure as code, you know? Um, how do you make it so as when an application engineer writes an application, he can actually regard the infrastructure as almost like a, co a code library. And that's something that a lot of legacy vendors have talked about and marketed to for some time, but the reality it is- It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does, it makes a ton of sense. But the reality is that all they could do was offer up some um, you know, proprietary APIs and, and programmatic interfaces. And the big challenge was the actual architecture of a network operating system um, was not designed in a way to actually enable that, that infrastructure to react in the proper way. By, by developing this containerized microservices architecture and by embedding Kubernetes and, and putting native, um, uh, native uh, DevOps tool chains you know, inside the operating system, we actually can deliver on the promise of infrastructure as code. And this is what everyone wants, so I've got to ask you, if everyone wants this, and we're hearing it all around the cube and all the events we go to, yeah. clearly a requirement, it's becoming table stakes, but what, what's been preventing people from doing this? Well, it's, it's the architecture. Um, I mean, if you look at, um, and I, you know, I call them legacy network architectures, but... Um, network architectures. Yeah, the network operating system um, itself, the actual, you know, the operating system that exists on the physical switch, um, that is where the problem starts, because that is designed as one big blob of code. Um, so all of the features are in there, they're all in the same place, they all sort of interact with each other, and, and it gives you um, reliability problems, it gives you innovation problems, because every time you change something, um, it has a knock-on effect. Um, if there's a bug and you have to fix that bug, you have to replace the entire blob. If you replace the entire blob, you have to down the switch, um, or you know, do some kind of complex patching, um, if there's a security vulnerability, you have to either defer, like actually fixing that and, and become non-compliant, um, or you have to down the switch. And, and you know, we live in an age, as I said, where everything is on all the time, everything is mobile, you know, everybody wants their services right here, right now. And the, the very, you know, the very existence of a business depends on being able to deliver those applications all the time. So you can't bring networks down. So when, when we've taken this microservices approach and we've containerized the actual infrastructure you know, and the protocols and everything else, so everything exists in, in its own container, now if there's a security vulnerability, we can replace just that container. If you're not using certain services on the operating system, you can kill those containers and in the process you reduce the threat surface of the, the, the operating system and the switch. Whereas in a legacy world with this monolithic blob, you, you can just you can turn off the features, but the code's still there. The threat surface is huge, and you're still vulnerable. 
So what's the solution to this, and how does SnapRoute fix this? What's the operational benefits? How do you guys play into mm -hmm. fixing the problems that have been holding everyone back? Well, I think you know it, collaboration. Um, I think is is you know is one of the big benefits. Um, you know, quite frankly, uh, I think there's you know there's there's been sort of tension in organisations. Um, I think unfairly, network operating uh, operations teams have been you know treated as you know holding things back or non-responsive or whatever. And I think that's completely unfair because actually the problem is with the you know the the, the vendor community. We haven't been delivering the tools. Um, that enable um, them to, you know, deliver the services they need, and so with, you know, with our approach, with this cloud-native approach, we're actually able to sort of, you know, bring the net NetOps world, you know, closer to DevOps, allow this con collaboration to happen, um, and give you, you know, the, the benefit of a a more sort of coordinated approach to delivering the application, and the application is the value that the business delivers. Um, and if you know if your application stops working, I mean, you know this in your personal life, right? You know we use our phones and our devices. You try using an application and it and it's not working. You, you're going to go and find a competitor. You're just going to go and say, oh well, you know I'll use I'll download something else from the app store. Um, and so you know availability is a huge thing for businesses today. And the network has been one of the most vulnerable pieces in terms of uh, availability, not because not necessarily because people are attacking it, but because it's so complex and brittle that any time you change anything, things fall to pieces. And that's why people don't want to touch the network. And that is why we had the rise of the whole SDN movement. The SDN movement was an approach that said, we need to make the network more dynamic. And so rather than addressing the actual operating system, put overlays over the top, create overlays and allow DevOps teams to do what they need to do to deploy applications over the top of your fairly dumb plumbing. What we're saying is, look, we're going to simplify and collapse that. You don't need translation layers and APIs. You don't need overlays. You don't need all of that stuff. We're now re-architecting the operating system itself so you can natively address that and, you know, and directly you know, control the policy that you need to, to deploy an application. Don, this is about modern infrastructure. It's about mm. cloud is modernizing. Yeah. All parts of the value chain from how people buy, consume, deploy, provide value to um, application owners, you guys are part of that. Yeah. How do people engage with SnapRoute? So I say, okay, this is some direction I'm going. Yeah. I'm going. I'm in cloud native, I'm in doing Kubernetes, I got containers, I'm yeah. using microservices, I'm betting my company's future on right. this direction, and a lot of people are. Yeah. How do I engage with you guys, and how do you fit into the equation? Right, so, um, so first of all, you know, initial engagement, you know, Website, LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, we're on all of those things. Um, uh, you know, we're in customer trials right now, in betas right now. Um, you know, we're obviously launching the product, so, you know, we're, we'll be shipping our sort of, you know, first commercial uh, deployments. Um, but as far as, you know, how and where are the good, you know, the good opportunities to, to deploy us, um, obviously, there are you know sort of new com you know, high growth companies um, who you know we're talking to who you know kind of want to build off us as a base to start with. But if you already have a large investment in de sort of deployed legacy uh, equipment, we can fit in quite nicely, um, and we can still add a ton of value because one of the big problem areas is actually the top of rack switch. The top of rack switch is actually where DevOps and NetOps come together. It's the first place where compute and the application touch the network. Um, and this is where usually a NetOps engineer spends a lot of time doing, you know, fairly sort of, you know, trivial tasks to help uh, applications, you know, get onto the network. And, um, and you know, it's a big waste so of time. It's a conversion point. You see, you it's playing, a conversion point. You're playing yeah. at the top of rack switch with the that is That is a good place for for somebody to start to get a tremendous amount of value out of our product. Um, you don't need to replace the entire network, you don't have to have us end to end, you don't have to have us in the core. If you deploy us at the top of rack switch, so you know, take a white box device, um, you know, deploy our operating system on top, it's very, very simple to do. The network engineer can very simply get that device up and running, it'll auto-configure itself, and then 
the DevOps engineers can you know, come in and say, hey, I want to deploy an application and I need, I need the network to do the following things and the device will configure itself in that way. This is really two worlds coming together, network mm. operations and developer operations coming together. Yeah. How do you see that coming together and meshing together? Obviously the top of rack switch you mentioned is a key area yeah. where you could, your code will work, but as those cultural communities come together, yeah. You know, network operations and dev, they're, they're seeing benefits with each other. Yeah. How are those worlds colliding? What's the benefit? What's it going to look like? And what's the opportunity? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I mean, first of all, I think that there's this misconception that these two, you know, these two types of organizations don't want to collaborate. And I think that's a complete mis misconception. I mean, everybody wants to do the right thing. They want to, you know, their businesses to grow. Um, and as I said earlier, I mean, I think the problem is that, you know, the, the vendor community has not delivered as, you know, a set of tools and products and capabilities that enable this collaboration. Um, and, and you know that's what we're bringing to the table, um, but I do think you know that there's this this sort of you know this cross pollination this 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 ability to um, you don't have to learn each other's area of expertise you don't suddenly have to become a networking expert you know a DevOps engineer doesn't have to become a networking expert and vice versa. Um, but there is this you know there's there's this point of you know collaboration and harmony that we can create. Um, where there was a lot of tension and, and you know, and, you know, in fact, there was a, you know, a lot of problems there. Um, we, we can sort of harmonize that and allow these organizations to just, you know, move forward with what really counts, which is growing the business. Tom, thanks for coming in. I appreciate mm -hmm. your time. Congratulations on the launch. Uh, final question for you. Take a minute to explain your background, your mm -hmm. previous roles in networking. Uh, we first met when you were at yeah. HP, HPE, and then HPE, and then, uh, why are you attracted to SnapRot as, as an opportunity? Yeah. And what's... Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I've am i been in networking for over 30 years. Um, <laughs> God help me. Um, and, uh, you know, networking security, various roles, mostly in sort of product roles, product management. Um, you know, prior to SnapRot, I was the, the general manager of the data center networking group at HPE. Um, and you know, I got to do some you know fabulous things at, at HPE. We have you know acquired Aruba and and uh, and other things there, which have been hugely successful. So it was a lot of fun. Um, but I came to the point um, with my career there where I realized you know I I done you know many of the things that I wanted to do, and also you know most of the opportunities that were there uh, in transforming and transitioning that company. And I wanted to get back to my startup roots. And um, you know the you know. A long conversation. These guys know data centers. These Apple guys. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they ran Apple. Um, and you know, and so I, I started talking to you know to, to Snap Broughton and, and you know they were asking my advice and things. And the, one of the things that attracted me, as you say, was um, it, it's a company built by operators for operators. You know, it's um, I, I, you know I've never had the opportunity to be in a company um, founded by operators who just intrinsically know what the customer problem is. Um, and because they've lived it. And, and I think you really do have to live it to truly understand. Um, and so, you know, that was a huge plus for me. I, I was really as, uh, attracted to, to that. Adam and Glenn, our founders, um, are, you know, really interesting, great guys. But also, there's this inflection point. There's this inflection point in the marketing, in it, market. And everything to do with, you know, startups and successful startups is not just having the right innovative technology, um, which I truly believe we do, but having the right innovative, innovative technology at the right time. And the timing here is perfect. I mean, cloud native, you know, Kubernetes, the movement behind Kubernetes is just a force unto itself. Um, you know, DevOps is, you know, is really moving forward. Um, there's a huge sort of groundswell within the networking community to, you know, to modernize and to, you know, to, to contribute more to the success of business. Um, so we have a massive opportunity. And, and the trend of programmable networks, infrastructure yeah. as code, yeah. is happening now. People yeah. want it. Absolutely. Rubber is hitting the road now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you know, it's uh, you know we'll go through the usual uh, adoption curves of you know early adopters and mass market, etc. And so you know there's a there's a journey ahead of us. But but yeah, no, I mean but, you know people are doing this right now. Well, so. congratulations on your launch, Snapchat. We'll be watching you. Real innovative moment, right to the core of the devices with an operating system, no abstraction layers with Kubernetes, interesting architecture. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to following it. Dominic Wild, CEO of SnapRow, here inside the Cube Studios in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. <laughs>